All right, we're gonna try to film this again. This is my third time filming this video. Let's let's get it. Let's let's do it. Oh my gosh! One, two, three, four, five, six. Six looks, baby. Let's get started. <laughs> So today's video, I'm going to be giving book reviews of these six books that I just recently read over the past, I would say, three, four months. I made it a goal this year to where every month I want to read three books since starting March. So I'm going to go in the order that I read these books and in my opinion, like what the books are about, my ratings, and then whether or not you should read the book. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. The first book that I read out of these six books, this book called We Were Liars by E. Lockhart and... This book is really good. I think when I started reading it, I, I read it within like a good like day or two because I sometimes, if a book is really good, like a good page turner, I won't put it down until I'm done and I will stay up until 3 to 5 a.m. to finish the book. And basically this book is about four teenagers. They're all like cousins and the main character is Candace. They're the Sinclair family. It's Candace, Marion, Johnny, and then... Johnny's best friend, Gat. Candace, Marion, and Johnny, their cousins. They're a rich white family. Basically, every summer, they go to a place where their, like, grandfather has, like, a bunch of houses where they all spend the summer together. And basically, the best friend of Johnny Gat, he comes along with him because that's his best friend. And then also, in a way, they're, like, Gat's father and Johnny's mother, they're gonna get married, so they're gonna be, like, stepbrothers, basically. So four of them, every summer from, like, 2008, they will go to their, like, their grandfather's, like, house to visit him and also to visit, like, each other. And we spend summers together but Candace had an accident I think summer 2015 was like her last summer there and in 2016 she missed out so it's 2017 that she's going back there to find out what happened to her summer 2015 to have her have memory loss so basically it's going back and forth between the summers that Candace had there when she was little with her cousins Marion and Johnny and Gat and then also the present of like how she's going through life and she has memory loss but she also deals with depression and the, the memory loss that she has is like also affecting her school so that she has like I take a break from school for some time and this is basically a young adult fiction and there's a plot twist that happens and plot twist is so good and also it's this family drama because you know with a with rich white what with rich white people there's always some drama family drama well any any family there's drama so you see the drama between Candace's mother and her aunts and then she kind of gets in the middle of it a little bit but yeah this book is so good I would say out of five stars I would honestly say five stars this book was really good I would read it again though honestly but I want to I have a whole bunch of other books I had to read but I would definitely read this book again like it is so good good and if you, sh you should definitely read it and yeah so that's my first book from E. Lockhart and I'm gonna read more of her books so I'm very excited to do that so next book the next book call me by your name now I read this because I heard about the movie that came out I heard like people rave about it a lot so I was like oh I know there's a book for it so maybe the book first and I'll watch the movie so I think it takes place in like night in the 1980s in Italy and it's basically this boy he has he was with a family that like every summer I think he's like the professor like he's a professor and he does like research so every summer he basically has a research intern stay with them for the summer and then they leave and then basically this is about one summer where one of the interns that um the boy's father like had come over spend the night at their house there's a romance that goes between the two of them and that's basically what it's about in the movie is the people that play him are timothy chalamet and army hammer so timothy chalamet is a 17 year old and then army hammer is 25 we're gonna skip past that because that's i mean maybe italy is different but i will say this is by the author andre andre aki aki Akiman. I'm sorry I mispronounced it. So the book, it was well written, but I think the style of it, I didn't really like that much. Like we were all in his head, in Timothy Chalamet characters, his head, and we were hearing his thoughts and like what he thought about certain actions that were happening. I will say there was slight erotica 
which I was not expecting, but oh my gosh, there's this scene that happens in the book and the movie that, in my opinion, is gross. When I was reading it, I was like, I kind of didn't want to read it anymore because I was like, eh, but I wanted to finish it so I could watch the movie because I didn't want to watch the movie until I read the book first to see like the full, like how it was supposed to be written and then the movie to see the difference between the two. So that's why I finished the book, but in all honesty, I would give it a three out of five. Would I recommend someone to read this? I definitely wouldn't read this. Well, I. I don't know if I would read it again. I might, maybe, maybe, maybe if I'm feeling it. I don't know if I want to read it again, but I'm going to keep the book because I do want to keep it. But I guess if you like summer romances, then you could read it with some like slight erotica. It just gave a lot of details about the sex scenes that happened, but like it's not, it's not an erotica book. <laughs> it was all right. I feel I'm going to get judged because I said that book was okay. But anyway, let's move on. So now I'm going to talk about these two books. One of Us is Lying and One of Us is Next. This is a sequel to this book. So I'm going to talk about this book first. This book is by Karen M. Mc... McManus. I, I'm, pressed. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. But this is basically about five kids. They end up in detention at school. And then by the end of the detention, one of them is dead. It's about the four main characters, the four characters that are in the same room as the boy that died. Like trying to figure out who out of the four of them killed the fifth person. It's basically like a mystery drama book with like young adults because they're all high school. There's like romance involved with two of the characters. I would say there's a plot twist at the end like to find out who was the person that actually killed them. It's shocking, but it's also also really good and also talks about just high school drama and like the guy that died he had like a blog but it was a gossip blog about the whole school and he always knew people's business and everyone that was in the room with him he had information about all of them and he at one point talked about all of them on his blog so they were all even more suspect because every one of them had a reason to kill him they're actually making I think it's a movie out of this I'm really excited to watch it I really hope they portrayed this well because it was so good that I bought the second one well I also also with Ava Jules like she also um, read these books and she said that you should buy both of them at the same time because once you're done with one you want to get to the other one and that's exactly what I did five stars now that we get from this one we're gonna go into the sequel of it now the sequel of it four characters that were in the first book are in the second book as well but they're not the main characters the main characters are for other people they have it to where it's the same high school and they have this sick game it's like basically like true for dare someone is controlling everyone in the school the person makes you do it dare they say i dare you to do this and if you have 24 hours to answer them and say yes or no and if you say no or if you don't answer at all he will spill a truth about you these characters pop up in this book a lot as well because like they're basically like side characters in this book but there's different main characters in this book this also was a really good book and i hope with the way how that movie goes if they do it well they make this one into movie too because like i said it was really good and i would also give this a five out of five i would say would i read it again yes but i would probably just read this one first and then read this one again too but i would definitely read both of them again because they are really good moving on so the last two books that I am going to be reviewing are both by the same author, Adam Silvera. <sighs> so I started reading this book first, The History Is All You Left Me, but the first 18 pages were so sad I had to put it down and read this one instead. This book is about the guy named Griffin. He has to do with the death of his first love and ex-boyfriend, Theo. His ex-boyfriend died and he's dealing with losing a, like your first love and a loved one because at first Griffin and Theo were best friends and they became a couple and then they broke up and then they were still best friends after the breakup but then it had to deal with his loss so now griffin is spiraling with his mental health severely because of the death of his first love and the only person that he can kind of relate to that can talk to about with the loss of theo is theo's boyfriend that he had before he died jackson and jackson and griffin they end up seeing each other at the funeral they end up trying to become friends to talk out their situation and what's going on it goes back and forth between griffin and theo's relationship and then also the present day of after theo's death it was the first anti page, like I said, was really sad because also we see the mental illnesses. I will say one of them is anxiety. And if you have, if you're an anxious person, then you can re relate to him, but also it may trigger you a little bit. So just a little warning about it. He has other, like this other mental health that I'm not gonna say because it might spoil the book. But yeah, we see like his mental health spiral and then how he gets himself back together. It's a very honest book about how your mental health can be really affected with the loss of, um, the loss of a loved one, especially when it's like your first love or just a best friend like really experiencing that and how like you can really fall into a deep dark hole if you don't get help soon enough so yeah but this book i would say in my personal opinion i like it because i like books that talk about mental health it is it is it was a little dark it is a little rough and 
Boy, oh boy, the further you get into this book, the juice, the drama, the tea, oh my, I literally was like, what the heck, why, what's going on, what are you doing, Griffin, no, but it was really good, I really like this book, I would read it again, I would honestly say, 5 out of 5, I would recommend you read it, but like, you know, if you're into books that touch on mental health, last book they both die at the end now like i said it's about the same author and this book is about basically a dystopian where every day people get a call from this company called deadcast and they basically tell you that you're dying at the end of the day <laughs> i just said that so just like yeah you know but basically that's the look that's the world they live in every day people thousands of people get the phone call and the phone call goes we here at last friend inc are collectively sorry for this loss of you our deepest sympathies extend to those who love you and those who will never meet you we hope you find a new friend of value to spend your final hours with today that's your call like hey sorry you're dying within the next 24 hours live your life boo yolo Yo. literally that was bad i'm sorry anyway so the two main characters in this book are mateo and rufus and mateo and rufus they both get this call saying they're dying in 24 hours And basically this is a journey about two complete strangers that they use this app i think it's in the last friend app it's the journey about them having last last minute experience not, not last, last minute lifetime experiences on their last day basically it gives you that question of like if you were dying in 24 hours what would you do that's kind of what this book is a little bit about and it also touches on side characters of like friends of mateo friends of rufus and then other people that were called by death cast or people that weren't called by death cast it like touches on those side characters a little bit too but the main two people it goes back and forth between is mateo and rufus this also has that style of writing where like each chapter is like a different person's perspective which i really like and also in one of us is next and one of us is line it also has that aspect of like every chapter is a different person's perspective i like that writing a lot and i want to do that in my own writing but it does that a lot in these books and i really like it it was really good the writing is well done in this book and it touches a little bit on mental health a little bit with mateo like he has like anxiety you can tell in this book it's shown to show how he overcomes anxiety because if it's last day on earth he's dying living 24 hours so it's like showing him overcoming and it's a really good book and it has like you know romance it has drama i would definitely Definitely give it five out of five. After I read this book, I cried. No, I was crying while reading the end of it. Like the last section of this book, I was crying because I was really sad and I had to like sit down for like 20 minutes, 2 a.m. in the morning, thinking about my life. Like, wow, this was really sad, but it was good, but it was sad. Wow. wow. I made a TikTok about it too, which was really funny. But I recommend reading it. If you like Adam Severo's books, then you definitely like, oh, you want to read his style of writing, definitely read this book. It's really good. If you want to read this book, read it with caution. I would say read it with caution, but it's really good. So yeah, those. Those are my reviews of all these six books. I hope that, okay, let me just put these down. I hope this video was like informative. I, never, I feel like I kind of rushed through this, but I hope it was a good like review for you guys. I get my ratings on these books. And like I said, I will make a separate video about the movie and book, Call Me By Your Name, the comparison and my opinion about it because I have a lot to say about that. But anyway, I really like all six of these books. Call Me By Your Name is questionable. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would definitely be doing more book reviews because I have a whole bunch of other books in there that i would like to get my ratings on that i think are really good so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you read any of these books what was your opinion about them or if you haven't read any of these books what one of these books that you would want to read and yeah follow my social medias my snapchat instagram and tiktok are all just ananda cash and my twitter is just joyful underscore cash and i have a podcast podcast is random chats with anna it's available on anchor spotify and other platforms as well i post on my podcast thursdays at 4 p.m 4 14 on spotify and then i post every Monday at 4 p.m. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.